If someone close to you has a developmental disability, you know that caring for them can be incredibly rewarding. But coping with those special needs can also be a challenge. And here in Texas, the wait for help is grueling. Maurice from Aristocats and Olaf from Frozen. Mm -hmm. Who is this? Olaf. Meet Braden. He's 20. Who's this? Marie. He's a movie buff. Thank you. Oh, I, I can't keep it? He is also autistic. Can I keep it? No, thank you. Can Braden be left alone? No, because if he was alone and someone opened the door and said, hey, come here, he would probably go. Come on, girl. And then there's Jamie. Come on. She is 17. Thanks, guys. And has the mental capacity of a toddler. Did you have a good day? Her mom also worries about her future. Step up. How much does the, the prospect of the school bus no longer coming terrify you? Oh, it does. Oh my gosh, yes. Right now, both mothers have their kids in school, but when they turn 22, by law, school will no longer be an option. But aging out of school is nowhere near the beginning of the crisis oh, okay. for these families. It just means troubles will soon get a lot worse. Jamie and Braden are two of the 155,000 people with special needs that have spent years waiting for help from the state of Texas. The help is funded through Medicaid. The program allows for families to get financial assistance for nursing care, therapies, group home living. All right, what do you want to watch? But Texas hasn't set aside enough money to pay for services for everyone who needs it. So they get on waiting lists waiting often 10 years or more. Their families are doing the best they can with the little they have to try and make it day to day in hopes they'll eventually get through that 10, 12, 14 year period and finally start receiving state services that their loved one actually, actually needs and deserves. Clay Boatwright has spent his life advocating for the rights of the intellectually and developmentally disabled. That includes his own two daughters. They spent years on waiting lists before getting help. I like Olaf and Marie. And people see Medicaid as a very negative light and they don't maybe realize that it's for people like my kid. In the past two years, almost 2,000 people dropped off waiting lists because they died, according to state records. What's the message it's sending? I think it sends the message that children and adults with disabilities just aren't as important as the rest of us. Braden was 11 when his mother put him on several of the state's waiting lists. Tadashi is here. Yes, so that's Big Hero 6? Yes. He's now 20. Well, this is what he does. He writes notes on his iPad. In two years, he will age out of the public school system. She is still waiting. It's terrifying. It's terrifying about when we're not going to have help anymore and what's going to happen. Braden's mom is a single mother. She works as an elementary school counselor, but Braden is her real full time job. I don't want to be in this family. What movie is that from? Coco. OK. And and of argument. OK, good to know. <laughs> because she can't get state aid, she pays for babysitters to watch her son while she's at work. Jamie also needs full-time care. She has seizures. She can't talk. Her vision and hearing are impaired. She needs help with everyday tasks, so she's pretty much dependent on us for everything. Marissa Ellis moved her daughter to Texas when she was eight. This family was in for a shock. This was a tough move to begin with, but then to find out that you're not going to get any help, that you have to sign up for these waiting lists, they had lived in Kentucky and Missouri, which both spend more on special needs kids than Texas. I mean, just from the get-go in Kentucky, we got therapies. We got, we, she was on a horse at two. She was in a pool. Marissa said Texas treated her kid like a number. They don't ask you anything about her disabilities or anything. After eight years of waiting, Jamie reached the top of one of the lists in 2018. I felt like I'd won the lottery. Here's orange. This occupational therapist now comes several times a week as part of that much needed help from the state. The impact has been amazing. There's also funds to pay attendance to give mom a break. 
They also got help to specially equip one of their bathrooms. Come on, hiding? But that help will go away when Jamie turns 21. You're going to knee walk? That's a PT goal right there. Which is why she remains on several other waiting lists. Yeah, good job. Until Texas lawmakers devote more money, the 155,000 people. That's my girl. Keep waiting and waiting and worrying about the day the school bus stops coming. In Dallas, I'm Tanya Iser.